Alrighty, welcome back to another video from MBMRC. Uh, this is one I've been waiting to do for a while. A lot of hype surrounding this radio. Uh, before I begin, really, I want to let you know that this footage you're seeing right now is sped up a little bit. What I'm trying to show you here is how long it takes this radio to start up. Not only to start up, but to truly be functional as a radio. Because that's what you guys bought this thing for, I would assume, is for a radio. So uh, I want to give this the best representation I can, uh, be as fair as I possibly can with it. I do think that it was a good idea. I don't think that it was completely thought through, and we're going to get into all that later. Uh, so I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Uh, we, we are into model airplanes and things like that, but I want to make sure that I'm doing what you guys like. And so far, I've received a lot of good feedback from my uh, radio reviews. So uh, I'm going to continue with that until you guys say that you want to see more flying. That's what we're going to do. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, so as you guys can see from my introduction, uh, takes this thing a while to start up and I do know that there's a sleep mode that you can use and that claims that they do doesn't use that much battery but if you still have power going to something you're going to use some battery and my point being is you take some top end radios the Futaba 18 uh, the Fry Sky Horus they are, are not going to take this long to start up so that is a definite huge downfall of this radio uh, I can't even describe how inconvenient it is for this thing to take this long to start. It is very inconvenient. Uh, but while this thing is starting up, we have plenty of time. It does feel really good in the hands. It is definitely quality. It's the case of a DX9. At least I kind of assume that it is. It feels very similar to a DX9. And like I said, I was uh, in the market there for a, a radio. I ended up getting the Futaba 12K. And this thing came out, and I was on the waiting list for this thing for a while, actually. And then once the hobby shop got it in, they gave me a call, and I went up and picked it up. So, um, first impression of it, I was like, why is this thing taking so long to start? And it's definitely a problem, and it hasn't really been addressed yet, other than the sleep button, which we will get into here before too awful long. But, like I said, it does feel good in the hands. You got plenty of channels here to do everything that you need. You got multiple three-position switches. All of these on the front face are three-position switches. Uh, one thing while this is here, I want to show you this. This is a new bug that I've had in this new firmware, which as of um, August 8th, I'm running the newest firmware. If you click this once it starts up, it comes up and tells you that the app for the airware isn't installed. I'm not sure why it does that. I will say once this thing is up and running, it's uh, pretty seamless. I don't really have too many issues with it. I think that what hinders this a lot is the Android interface. I, I do think so. Uh, instead of making their own user interface, I think that they kind of, I don't want to say lazily, went with an Android operating system. I think they did it for things like beta flight and things like that. Which, again, I think, in theory, it was a great idea. I do not think that it was ready. I do not think that it was ready for the market yet. Um, as you can see, I do have some time on this. That's right. Here's my Big Stick 40. It's got 5 hours and 52 minutes on it. Um, that's just one of them. Let's go see. i got my Sig Cadet Senior here. 5 hours and 43 minutes on it. Uh, multiple multiple uh, models on here. I've flown just about everything I have. Lost this plane right here because of this radio and we'll get into that in a bit also. As you can see I only had 13 minutes on it which is unfortunate. I really like that plane. But um, it's still a Spectrum obviously. Uh, you still have DSM2, DSMX even. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but like I said, yeah, you got multiple three position switches, everything on the front. Uh, you got uh, left and right trims up here, which is definitely nice and handy. You still have your uh, vine button, mode one. which is now kind of more a, I'm going to want to call it like an idiot button on some of the newer, like the gyro receivers for the safe. Um, you got two sliders in the back, but instead of being uh, vertical, they are horizontal, which I'm actually kind of a fan of that. I, I kind of like that. Um, wireless trainer, all that stuff. It's all here. Um, pretty top of the line. It's got Bluetooth, obviously. It's got Wi-Fi. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've done enough research about this radio. However, I think that that is kind of what hurts it a little bit. I kind of feel like uh, it needs to go back to being a radio. Uh, 
I don't feel the need to want to check my Facebook while I'm flying. Uh, a lot of places, you know, it, it doesn't have uh, a place for a SIM card. So, and that's, that's, I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. Uh, what I'm saying is you're going to have to have Wi-Fi to use any internet on this thing. Uh, you, I know you can use a hotspot on your phone. Some carriers charge you more for that. And if you read the manual, which it doesn't come with one, you have to download it on the on the radio here, which again is fine. I understand that. Uh, save it on paper. Save the planet. It's awesome. But it is nice to have a paper manual that you can pull out and reference and not have to wait to download something. Uh, in the manual, it tells you to not have third-party apps open while you're using the Airware app, which is, I think is a great idea. But again, if you're going to use this as a radio, um, I think that you're going to you're in for a little bit of a lackluster. If if you don't have a smartphone or if you don't have a home computer and you need to use Betaflight for quad or something like that, it is great for that. I highly suggest it. Again, another great thing with uh, Spectrum, Horizon, if you're big into the bind and flies and that's all you fly, this is going to be the only way to go. You can go on, uh, it's pretty simple, you can go on the internet, you can pretty easily go to Horizon's website, and you can download the model for this, for this radio. Uh, I believe it is, everything is similar to the DX9. Everything I had in my DX8 G2 transferred over with an SD card, which I did have some problems with that. You kind of have to do it a little bit different. And I wasn't a huge fan of that. I ended up with a couple corrupt models. I do think that is my fault with the type of SD card that I was using, though. So I'm not going to hold that against the radio. I will say that it might be a problem that you run into. Okay, there it is again, app not installed. I have to select it from, from the multitasking bar here for some reason. But okay, we're back in it. I also want to say I feel like we got a little bit far away from what we know as Spectrum. Uh, it's a little bit different to program, and if it were me, I would think that I would try to make this interface as similar to that of the DX8 or the DX9 as I could because I'm appealing to the same fan base. And it is still easy. I will give them that. It's, it's still probably the most simple radio to program on the market. That being said, it is... Uh, I wouldn't call it even remotely similar really to a DX8 or DX9. It's kind of its own language. You learn it easily, but it is a little bit different. The other thing that I have kind of found with it is it's a little bit finicky with certain types of receivers, and that to me is a huge problem. Um, I have a lot of AR636As, which obviously that is a go-to receiver for all their bind and flies, the Valiant, the Commander, uh, the Piper Cub, all of them, and I had a bout where it would not bind to them. I You have to flip it upside down, you have to put it on a mirror to see when the light blinks. The gyro seems to be really sluggish. A lot of times, even now that they're all bound, they will, you'll, feel, you'll see it bind, and you'll see all the control surfaces level out and do their thing, and you're still going to be waiting close to 5 seconds, 10 seconds after that, which is an initial 30 seconds to have control. And to me, that is a sign of uh, severe latency. Um, if it's going to take that long to find the receiver, I see that as a problem in the air. Should something happen, should it uh, get bumped, should something like that happen, how long is it going to take for it to find that receiver again? And that is something that scares me. And that might have been what happened with my ultimate. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it was on an AR636A receiver. I took it up, uh, did a quick pass with it, brought it back down to do a low pass. Next thing I know, everything's gone. I have no elevator, no rudder, no ailerons, no control services, basically, to save us the time. No motor response either. Um, I could cite it as a poor connection between the speed controller and the battery. Very highly possible. However, never had the problem before. Uh, do I want to blame this radio for it? Absolutely. Never had that issue. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, hating on this thing. Uh, you know, I'm not sour grapes because I, you know, wrecked a plane over it. I've wrecked a plane on several radios. It's no problem with this thing. It, it is a new product. It is still definitely in its testing stages. In my opinion, they released it way too soon. 
And that brings me to the point of why I'm probably going to be selling this thing. Again, I will say, I mean, it does feel good. The gimbals definitely feel nice. They're not really as rigid as I like usually, but that's fine. Uh, something I also want to hit on, uh, these rubber grips, for some reason, they overlap this plastic here a little bit. And it just, it kind of feels a little bit weird, like eventually they're going to wear off and this rubber grip might pull out. So that's kind of its own thing. I'm not sure why that's like that. I thought that maybe it was just mine, but I've seen a couple other people's like that also. Um, you can adjust the gimbals from the front of the radio, which is nice. You just pop these little rubber pieces out, get yourself a Phillips head screwdriver, no problem. That is nice. However, there are other radios out on the market. Um, Futaba 18MZ, I believe, or 18SC, sorry, that you can do that with. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just a little bit rushed. It's not by any means, it's it's not junk. I just feel like it should have been a little bit more R&D in it in the past couple, past couple months instead of releasing it right away. So that is more or less my review. Uh, there's going to be a couple other things I'm going to talk about here, and uh, we'll go from there. So, thanks. All right, so I told you I was going to do a little bit here why I thought uh, Horizon was maybe freaking out a little bit about this thing. I don't know how many of you are subscribed to Model Aviation Magazine. I'm sure any of you that's got an AMA subscription is. Um, this thing's been plastered with ads for this. Uh, pretty religiously, the past couple months here. Um, they have here on this one, which is August, they have uh, Spectrum, Futaba, and Fry Sky Radios reviewed. Which I would assume that it would be at least a similar price point, which you can get the same... Uh, you can get a Futaba 16SZ for around the same price as the uh, Spectrum iX12 there. So I figured it would be uh, a pretty fair review. I, so I opened up this month's magazine. And of course they have the, you know, the Fry Sky Horus there. Which, uh, to be completely honest with you, other than what I've read online and a couple of videos I've watched, I do not know much about that. Other than I've had a couple uh, Tyrannus radios in the past, not very impressed. Uh, honestly, pretty hard to program for somebody who just wants to get out and fly, uh, not have to worry about Lewis scripts and things like that. Um, so they have in here the iX12, and of course they do praise it, and uh, you know they should. Like I said, it's not a terrible product. It's not for me, and it's not for people who want to go out and fly. It, I don't think that it's trustworthy in its current state. And again, we're here on August 6th or August 8th, uh, 2018. So. But they compare this radio, which is, uh, they compare it to a Futaba 12K, which you guys have seen my video on that. But the price point is uh, about $200 less on this radio than it is on the iX12, which, I mean, if you're going to compare them, I just don't think like that's the fair thing to do. I think they should have the 16SZ, because uh, that is also a new radio. I feel like they should have the 16SZ in here and not the 12k. I feel like that's a little bit uh, fair, not, or sorry, unfair, and that um, they're trying, they're trying to make this thing look really good. So actually, uh, one last thing I do want to show you here, uh, another kind of reason I think Horizon's freaking out a little bit about it. Um, I have since factory reset this radio, so what you're seeing here, I was running the correct update on it. However, um, there's only been 1,000 people that have downloaded this app. Uh, I know that it probably goes in one, two, three thousand, so it, it might be 1,999 for all I know. Um, but what I will say is that's really not that many people when you, when you think about it, because in order to run the radio as a radio, you have to have the app. So that tells me that they've shipped less than 2,000 of these, which to me, uh, really not flying off the shelves there. So... Uh, I think that Horizon's losing it a little bit about this because I'm sure that they put a lot of money into it and they should have kept putting money into it for another couple months in my opinion. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Uh, any questions, comments, please put them below. I will try to answer them the best I can. Thank you so much. Have a great day.